As a screenwriter, I have a few thoughts to add to the deluge of reviews that have done an admirable job kicking this dog crap Star Wars series to the curb. With a show as bad as The Acolyte, you need to get a couple of good deep sniffs of this stench that this rotting piece of garbage is giving off to give a good accurate review. How about more beans, Mr. Taggart? I'd say you've had enough. The Acolyte has some of the worst characters ever to come out of any modern TV show. I'm pretty sure the toy sales aren't going to register on the charts for this one. <laughs> oh, I have a little earring. Wait, we can make them fight. <gasps> Let's make them fight, please. Easily. One of the worst things about this show are the cheap looking soap opera grade sets. I have to mention the utterly laughable studio set that they call Kelnaka's House in the Jungle. It looks like they spent about $500 on some fake plants, took Fred Flintstone's house, threw it onto a soundstage, and called it home for a Wookiee Jedi. Above all else, this is my number one issue I have with this entire series. The sets, they all look fake. There is no word other than shocking at how bad every scene looks in all four episodes. The only ones that look barely acceptable are the ones that are actually shot outside. And even those aren't great because of how the scenes are shot. And believe me, I'll be getting to Leslie Headland's use of the cameras and direction in a little bit. Why does every Jedi in this series look like they just came from a frickin' PTA meeting? They look like your average mom and dad from suburbia, USA. It's like your best friend's parents signed up to be frickin' Jedi. Now, I don't want to beat up on the actors too much because, hey, you know, they're just trying to get a paycheck just like any of us. If they get offered a job, they're going to take it. But the casting choices are a head scratcher in this one. When you look at the choices they made, none of them feel right. They lack authenticity, but hey, it is diverse, right? Yes, casting diversity, my friends. It's the check the boxes methodology of selecting actors. But here's the thing. When you make the wrong choices, the audience won't believe in the power of the Jedi or anyone else in this series wields. It's the force and it has to feel believable. I mean, the thread, <laughs> it's the thread. Power must be given to those we believe can wield it. It needs to feel convincing and convey to us that they are the people we should fear or respect. But none of these Jedi look as though they wield the power of the thread convincingly. May the thread be with you, my friends. You know, it's kind of funny how they tell us that Kilnaka's house is so well hidden. He's a Jedi who does not want to be found. Yet the entire cast, and I mean the entire cast, has about as hard a time finding his Fred Flintstone inspired house as finding a turd your dog left in the middle of your bed the night before. I never thought that any show could make every aspect of a production look like an amateur high school play. Unless, of course, it is a amateur high school play. I'm sorry, just you asking me that question is, is making me cry. Is it? That's all right. Yeah. The cinematography and direction screams, I'm an amateur and I have no idea what I'm doing. If you are asking yourself why all the scenes come across as boring, look no further than the angles and the camera distance Leslie Headland uses to tell her story. Virtually all of them are a static shot at a medium distance, making everything feel cold, dull, and uniform. Every great director will tell you that the most significant parts of a movie are told through close-ups. It's where the actors are given the opportunity to act out and show the audience details about the character, who they are, what the character is feeling, and any subtext that needs to be conveyed. A great example is Dune Part 2, and if you want to see a fantastic blend of camera shots, angles, and distances, Give it a watch and pay close attention to how Denis Villeneuve uses all of these things to tell his story and how much we learn through close-ups of the actor's facial expressions. Consider what you're about to do, Paul Atreides. Silence! Rebecca Ferguson is one of the best actors who can tell a story through her face alone in a close-up. Elijah Wood is another with his performance as Frodo Baggins in Lord of the Rings. It's actually why Peter Jackson chose him for the role. He said that Elijah could say more with his eyes than most actors can with words. 
And why in the fuck is this episode called Day? Is it because it all happened during the day? Did I miss something? Even the names of the episodes give off a foul stench of, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Seriously. Go on. God, I'll tell you, I could spend the better part of an hour going into how pathetic all of the production elements are in this series. There is literally nothing that you can point to and say that it's well done. Leslie Headland's directing screams, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Just look at every shot. It's dull, with only one or two perspectives in every scene. There are no creative camera zooms or angles that in any way confers the slightest amount of expertise with what is being filmed. The pacing is stuck in second gear for the entire four episodes, which makes watching this show feel like a lullaby is being sung into your ear as you slowly drift off to sleep. The Acolyte is easily one of the most boring TV shows ever made, but with the industry being what it is, very few people will actually call Leslie Headland out for the abysmal job that she's done. She spent $180 million putting this thing together, and it's utterly a pathetic TV show. Where did that money go? From shallow, simple dialogue phrased at a second grade level to non existent world building and terrible scripts that make the actors look like first year drama students. I'm sure that they try their best not to make a scene look stupid, but with these scripts, they end up looking stupid anyway. Bad scripts will turn all actors into bad ones. Stupid is, stupid does, sir. Then there's one of the most asinine character twists ever written in episode four. From out of nowhere, May decides that she's not going to kill Kilnaka, and instead, she changes sides. Wait, what? <laughs> Why? because she's been running through the jungle for long enough to think everything through, which is what any jungle jog will most likely do, right? Make you change your mind on something you've spent the last 16 years of your life training for. Such a dedicated student to the art of Jedi assassination. 16 years thrown down the drain, ruined because of a brief run in the jungle. I could spend a lot more time ripping into the first four episodes of The Acolyte, which is complete dog shit in every way. Still, I'd like to save some of my four letter cuss words for the back half of this toilet bowl Disney Plus streaming TV show. There is no way that there can be a Lucasfilm production that will ever come close to being this much of a drama school train wreck. Unless they hire the 10th grade drama class at Los Angeles High. This has to be the bottom of the barrel, the end of the road, the final frontier in this Star Wars decline that's landed this franchise at the bottom of an overflowing septic tank. It's pretty shitty, my friends. And that's all I have to say about this garbage, and I will see you in our next video.